thousand degrees. Down in the core, it's got to be tens of millions of degrees. Hot enough to trigger a nuclear reaction, turning millions of tons of matter into energy every second. More than all the energy ever made by mankind. Back home, we see this energy as light, feel it as heat. But up close, there's nothing comforting about the sun. It's so full of electrical and magnetic activity, it's bursting out in these huge incandescent gas loops called prominences. Each one releasing more energy than 10 million volcanoes. You could get the Earth through one of these loops and still have tens of thousands of kilometers to spare. And where they burst through, it's exposing the cooler layers below, making sunspots. They're a fraction cooler than their surroundings. It's why they look black, but they're still hotter than anything on Earth. And they're massive, too. Some of these are at least 50,000 kilometers across. A solar flare. A superheated stream of electrified gas blasting deadly radiation out into space. But one day, all this will stop. The sun's fuel will be spent. When it dies, that'll be it for the Earth as well. This God creates life and destroys it, demands we keep our distance. This comet has strayed too close. It's being boiled away by the sun's heat, creating a tail that stretches for millions of kilometers. It's freezing in here. There's no doubt where this comet's come from. The icy wastes of deep space. But look at all this steam, the geysers and dust. It's the sun again, melting the comet's frozen heart. A kind of vast, dirty snowball, covered in grimy tar. Tiny grains of what looks like organic material, preserved on ice since, well, who knows when, maybe even the beginning of the solar system. Say a comet like this crashed into the young Earth billions of years ago. Maybe it delivered organic material and water, the raw ingredients of life. It may have even sown the seeds of life on Earth that evolved into you and me. But say it crashed into the Earth now. Think of the dinosaurs wiped out by a comet or asteroid strike. It's only a question of time. Eventually, one day, unless we can find a way to protect ourselves, we'll go the way of the dinosaurs. The Earth is safe, for now. But if life on Earth was obliterated, we'd be stuck out here, homeless, adrift in a hostile universe we'd need to find another home. Among the millions, billions of planets, there must be one that's not too hot, not too cold, with air, sunlight, water, where, like Goldilocks, we could comfortably live. The red planet. Unmistakably, Mars. 
for centuries we've looked to Mars for company, for signs of life. Somewhere down there could be extraterrestrial life. But are we ready to find it? Ready to rewrite the history books, to tear up the science books, to turn our world upside down? What happens next could change everything. More than any other planet, Mars captures our imagination. Think of sci-fi films, comics, what follows? Martians. It's all just... But what if there really is something here? If there is, it's living on a dead planet. The processes that make Earth habitable shut down hundreds of millions of years ago here. Red and dead. Mars is a giant fossil. Something's alive. A dust devil. A big one. Bigger than the biggest tornadoes back on Earth. There's wind here. And where there's wind, there's air. Air that could sustain extraterrestrial life. But it's too thin for us to breathe, full of choking carbon dioxide. There's nothing to protect Mars from the sun's ultraviolet rays. And it's cold, as low as minus 80 degrees, freezing water in the ground, at the poles, and even in the atmosphere, as snow. It's hard to believe anything could live here. But on Earth, there are creatures that survive in extreme cold, heat, and even in the deepest ocean trenches. It's as though life is a virus. It adapts, spreads. Maybe we're carrying the virus of life across the universe right now. Even in the most extreme conditions, life usually finds a way. But on a dead planet, with no geological activity to replenish the minerals and nutrients in its soil, no heat to melt its frozen water, and all this dust, it's hard to see where we're going. But we can't miss this. Olympus Mons. A vast, ancient volcano. Three times higher than Everest. So wide, it would stretch almost all the way across Spain. Since its discovery in the 1970s, it's been declared extinct. It looks like there's something happening on its slopes. It's as though lava has been flowing. But any lava flows should be long dead, obliterated by meteorite impacts. Unless this monster isn't dead after all. If it's not, there could be molten magma beneath the crust right now. This changes everything. Volcanic activity could be melting frozen water in the soil, recycling minerals and nutrients, creating conditions for life to exist. This makes the Grand Canyon look like a crack in the pavement. It goes on and on. So far, it would stretch all the way across North America. But look, signs of activity, erosion, and what looks like dried up riverbeds on the canyon floor. Maybe volcanic activity melted ice in the soil, sending water flowing through this vast canyon. Activity that we now know could still be melting ice, creating water. And where there's water, there could be life. If we can find running water, there's a chance we could find living creatures. Trundling across this desolate landscape, 
the NASA rover Opportunity. It's finding evidence that these barren plains were once ancient lakes or oceans that could have harbored life. Look at these gullies. When probes orbiting Mars pass over them, they keep spotting new ones. More proof that Mars is alive and kicking. That there may be water flowing beneath the surface creating these gullies. Water which could be sustaining Martian life. Now all we have to do is find it.